Thanks so much. Okay, whether you are out in the crowd in Pasadena on Saturday or celebrating New Year's Eve Friday night, you're going to come in contact with many, many people. If you're going to be indoors, your risk is even greater. That's right. There are many things you can do to reduce your risk of exposure to COVID. And joining us now is Dr. Suman Radhakrishna, Director of Infection Control at Dignity Health Hospital here in California. Hi, doctor. Thank you so much for joining us. As we've been talking about the holidays, wrap up with some pretty big gatherings, especially New Year's Eve. Let's begin with the event that comes first, as I said, New Year's Eve, and many people will celebrate that indoors with other people. How concerned are you with this intensifying COVID surge about what precautions people should take? Thank you for having me. And um, yes, um, when, whenever people gather, that is when social distancing is lost. And if you're eating and drinking, you take your mask off. Um, now there is um, droplet spread of um, the virus. And we know that the Omicron variant is a lot more uh, contagious than uh, Delta was. So all of these add to worry that um, there will be uh, a surge in the number of cases and positivity rate um, uh, after the holidays. What can people do to reduce it? First of all, if you can, um, you know, hold it outdoors. Second, keep it to small groups. See if you can have only vaccinated people around you. Of course, if you have little children who are under the age of five, that's a problem. And anybody who's, um, who has any reason to have immunocompromised state should be boosted as well if it was uh, more than six months since the, la the vaccine um, series. All right, you talked about those precautions, but uh, what do you think? What do you think about the Rose Parade, the Rose Bowl? Those are you know, huge events, but they're outdoors. How do you feel about those, you know, people going and hanging out there for several hours? So if you are at the Rose Parade, um, then you know, stick to your, your family and your unit um, and uh, try to social distance from other units that are around you. And whenever possible, wear a mask. Um, things that increase the aerosol um, production is uh, shouting, singing. So these are things you have to watch out for. And at all times, be cognizant of who is around you and how close they are. If you are not feeling well for whatever reason, whether you tested positive or negative, take a time out. Everybody understands. And doctor, how important is testing and what's your take on these at home tests? Are they accurate? Should people trust them before they get together with family and friends? Hopefully these rapid tests will be more available starting in January. Right now we still have a shortage, but I think this is the next um, important tool in terms of us getting back to normalcy. Um, what these um, tests do is, um, especially the at-home rapid tests, are not as sensitive. But um, if the test is negative and someone has COVID, then they are less likely to transmit infections because it's not recognizing that threshold of virus level that is required to transmit. That's number one. Number two, it's quick, it's easy, you get results instantaneously. So if you're going to a party, for example, and you test yourself before you go, you know that you're not contagious. And then three to five days after the party, if you test yourself, you know that you do not contract something from the party. So that way, you know, and quarantine yourself and um, prevent spread of infection. But at, at the end of the day, you know, no test is 100%. So if you have symptoms, even if you have tested negative, it's good to quarantine yourself. Dr. Radhakrishna, thank you so much for your time and your expertise. Thank you. We'll talk to you soon. Yeah, like she said, it's a great tool, just an extra one that we can all have and use. All right.